So you want to learn how to install a mod chip with a pen editor? Well, stay tuned and let me show you how it's done. The tools and supplies needed are your Xbox teardown tools, a soldering iron, solder, solder wick, flux paste, Q-tips, an assortment of soldering iron tips is recommended but not necessary, but it does help in achieving the best results. Electrical tape, small needle nose pliers, wire cutters, thin gauge wire, I'm using 30 AWG, the two row pin header, and rubbing alcohol to clean up after using the flux to desolder. Check for links to all this in the description. Before I get into this video, I would like to say there are a lot of different mod chips out there and they can have some slightly different variations on installation. Another factor is what motherboard version it's being installed to. I will cover all the key points of installing a mod chip on all motherboard versions. I'm using a Smart XX B2 chip, so if you're installing a different chip, only use this video as reference. If possible, find some sort of guide for your exact chip. If none are available, check out my mod chip pinout guide. Using that video in conjunction with this video should lead you to a hard modded Xbox. Check the links in the description for the other videos I made that can be used with this one. Now the first step would be to take apart the Xbox and remove the motherboard from the case. I'm going to start by installing this chip in a version 1. The process will be the same with a version 1.1 also. Let's focus on the LPC. You will need to remove the solder from 11 of these 15 holes. I chose to use solder wick with a bit of flux paste to get this accomplished. We will need to take our pin header and trim it to the appropriate size, so 6 rows of 2. Now you will need to remove the one pin as shown here. Next place your pin header into the LPC and fix it in place with a bit of tape. Flip over your motherboard and solder in the pin header. Don't use a whole lot of solder, keep it clean and shiny. One other thing to note is chips like the Executor X3 utilize the entire LPC, so again find a specific guide if needed. Now we will want to take a short piece of 30 gauge wire and attach it to our D0 point on the motherboard. For versions 1 and 1.1 it is located here. This is relatively delicate soldering and it can be a pain to get it to attach. There is actually a much larger point on the bottom side of the motherboard. It is located here. So choose your point and get your wire soldered. If you chose to use the bottom point, tack down your wire with some electrical tape, and you can run it through this nearby screw hole. Just don't replace that screw when you put it back together. Now we will need to analyze the chip and figure out what orientation it needs to be placed onto the pin header. For me, it was like this. Now just solder your D0 point to the D0 point on your mod chip, and that's it for the version 1 and 1.1. Moving on to version 1.2 through 1.5, the only thing that changes here is the location of the D0 points on the motherboard. So all you will need to do is change where you're soldering your D0 wire. Here's the point on the top, and here is the point on the bottom. One thing to note on this particular mod chip, and I would make the assumption others would need similar things done, if you happen to be installing to a version 1.5 motherboard, they want you to do a mini LPC fix and solder some extra wires from the mod chip to the points on the motherboard. One is ground and the other is 3.3 volt. Though having to do this will be extremely rare, but here are the said points on the motherboard. Now onto version 1.6 and 1.6b. The process starts the same, but you don't have to remove any solder, though this is true with other versions as well. Prep your pin header in the same way, then solder the pin header in place. Now here's where things get a little bit more difficult. We will need to do what is called an LPC rebuild, because Microsoft disconnected these pins to make modding more difficult. Flip over the motherboard and find this area, it's near the LPC, so let's reconnect them one by one. The soldering is pretty delicate, so just take your time and make sure you don't short to nearby pads on the board. This method of doing the LPC rebuild should hold true for most mod chips. Like I said before, if you can find a specific guide for your chip, use it, and only use this video as reference. 
Here is the L frame slash D zero point on this version. Just route it to the top of the motherboard through the screw hole and attach it to its appropriate pad on the mod chip. For me, this was the same as the D0 point in other versions, but I do know some chips will have specific pads labeled for LFRAM and that it's only supposed to be used on version 1.6s. Don't try to use it on any other version. Now, brand new mod chips came with this quick solder LPC fix board like this one. It came with the Smart XX chips. As you can see, it made things a lot easier and made it look a whole lot cleaner than the mess of wires I just showed you. But if you don't have one of these boards, then you gotta do what you gotta do. Well, that's that. Put your Xbox back together, and if you did everything right, you should be greeted with a custom BIOS. For my particular mod chip, it boots into its own OS first. Also, there isn't a BIOS flash onto this chip which was common when these chips were relevant, but nowadays if you pick up a chip second hand, it will more than likely already have been flashed. Thanks for watching, and a big shout out to Paul IT for giving me the mod chip used in this video. I couldn't have made it without his generosity, so check out his Twitch and his Instagram, links in the description. If this video helped you, please leave a like and subscribe for more modding goodness, and comment if you have any questions or anything else. Anyways, until next time, peace.